Welcome to the CW500 podcast. I'm Angelica Mari. In this program, we will cover the main findings of the Harvey Nash PA Consulting CIO Survey 2010. More than 2,600 CIOs took part in this global survey, now in its fourth edition. My guests in this podcast are Rupert Chapman, Cloud and Outsourcing Specialist, and Alex Blues, Outsourcing and Shared Services Expert at PA Consulting. They will talk about the highlights of the report and give us some insight around leadership skills and strategy trends. So, Rupert, uh, in your report, you mentioned that uh, skills of CIOs are changing very rapidly and many uh, feel they're not equipped to deal with the uh, post-recession environment. So how do they skill up? So I think, Angelica, that the, the, the key area for them to skill up is actually to be able to um, properly engage and uh, engage with the business and actually have a language that the business needs. So I think to start off with is, number one is stop talking about IT. Talk about the business and talk about the benefits and talk about actually how they can enable um, the business to meet their, to, to actually meet their, their, uh, their strategy. I think number two is actually is, is to continue from a benefits perspective. Focus on the benefits and focus on actually what they're going to deliver, rather than actually how things are, how much things are going to cost. So I think getting that language and getting that skill set is right. I think the next one is actually from a functional perspective, is making sure that their team is um, moving from an account management perspective into much more of a business analysis business engagement perspective so that actually he, the CIO has a true understanding of what the business is looking for from IT rather than actually just taking orders and um, sort of taking demand. I think only once they have been able to, to, to overcome that will they really be able to break through into the, into the boardroom proper. Okay, so another interesting uh, snippet of your uh, report is that uh, increasingly businesses are tracking the ROI of IT projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, leaders are having to become more accountable. So could you elaborate on what you've seen so far? So I think um, from, from, from our perspective is, is that um, a lot of traditional IT projects have been focused on actually the implementation, have been focused on actually um, getting the, the, uh, the capability in the hands of the business. And once that's there, and actually once the service is up and running, it's time to move on to another project. Mm -hmm. But actually what the recession and the, the, the shortage of liquidity and the shortage of cash has really driven people to, to be much more focused on the benefits and much, more, and much less tolerant of actually projects that slip. Um, and, and actually it seems to be a, a sort of litany of uh, traditionally, you've put together a project plan, but also you, you, you have to put, if it's a big big project, put in a six-month or a 12-month or sort of contingency because you know it's got to slip. Less of that is, is actually being tolerated. So I think those focus on the benefits, focus on actually have I really got, have I really squeezed this out from, 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 from the project? Does the business case really um, uh, sort of uh, hold water? And increasingly we're seeing actually projects being formally having to go through particular gates um, of governance to actually put before they go from from one stage to another, um, which our um, other parts of business are, are are used to used to working from marketing perspective. I think that's that's much more an IT focus. Right. So um, another point of your study was that uh, there is a danger of uh, CIOs being completely bypassed by other parts of the business if they don't take advantage of technologies such as the cloud. Mm -hmm. So how do they avoid that? So I think from my perspective, the cloud, as you say, does provide that, that a real opportunity for the CI to actually um, enable the business to be much more innovative and much more sort of uh, to, to, to offer a, a much greater um, and quicker route to market. However, um, rather than trying to stop the inevitable, is actually to help guide the business and help guide the business on actually what they're the, the, to, to, to bring up their, their, their level of understanding and education so that they can um, properly make a, a, a selection of who are the right customers for me. So from a security perspective, from a data perspective, and from a service perspective. And that, once you've educated the business, will actually 
um, mean the business will embrace you from an IT perspective rather than actually going part bypassing you because you can't actually deliver. Okay, so Alex, um, you talked a lot about uh, outsourcing and automation in your report and also the need for suppliers to come up with the goods with innovation to prove their worth. So what do suppliers and businesses need to do in order to create a good relationship that also brings value for money? At PA, we're seeing two sides to this. We're seeing the word innovation being used rather than the word cost cutting. Mm -hmm. People are using innovation to help cut costs and add value. So from the client's perspective, they need to be much closer to the business, peer-to-peer -peer with the business, to really understand what the business requires. Then they need to translate that into innovative solutions. And more and more, the CIO is looking to the outsourcer to do that. So what, what we're finding at PA is that the outsource of the supplier really has to do two things. Firstly, it has to reduce the cost of its service. And we've come up with this term called automation, which is the combination of outsourcing and automation. So lower the costs, get the business as usual running more cheaply to provide a greater headroom to be able to innovate. And secondly, the good suppliers are moving away from waiting to be asked to actually coming up with ideas and going proactively both to the IT department but increasingly to the business to say we have a way of saving money, we have a way of improving speed to market or whatever the, the burning business issue may be. All right, that's great. Thank you very much uh, for making the time, Jim. That's it for now. For more news and analysis on IT management, please go to www.computerweekly.com. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.